Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. So in this week's video I want to look at some really interesting CGA games. This is the menu that comes up when you first start the game. And the first option here is just the ordinary CGA 4 color mode and it requires just an ordinary CGA RGB monitor. Now, option 3 we're also familiar with, that's CGA 16 colors, but of course for that you need to use the composite output and a composite monitor and it has to be NTSC at that. Uh, of course you can get a converter and I have a whole video about this on my channel. Uh, but that's not what we came here to see today. The interesting one is number two and they call it CJ More Color Mode and they claim that it runs on an ordinary CJ RGB monitor. Uh, so this I have to see for myself. So I'm going to select this option now, there is one way that you can get 16 colors on a CGA adapter, and that is by using a text mode. Uh, but the problem with this is that it limits you to an effective resolution of 160 by 100, so you end up with very, very chunky looking graphics. They sort of look like uh, old BBC Micro graphics or something like that. Uh, but this is the loading screen, and as you can see, there's clearly light blue, uh, I believe that there is a dark blue there, yellow, red, white, green. Uh, so there's certainly more than four colors here. Now, it is possible that they did this using a text mode. Obviously, if you have very, very small characters and you choose the character set carefully, uh, you can pick characters that allow you to draw something that looks like a graphic. But of course, it's painstaking and a lot of work. Uh, now, you do still have some limitations with that. Uh, I have to be honest, I don't know how the loading screen is done, but I do know how all of the individual effects in the game itself are done. Uh, so I'm going to run through each of the different events in this game. It's actually a really fun game, so worth having a look anyway. And I'm going to explain how each of the different CJ More Color effects is done. Now the very first one is not very interesting, but they get very interesting after that. So this is the half pipe event, and you can see that it looks like there's more than four colors, but in fact this is just a standard CGA color palette. Uh, what they have at the top is not orange, but red and yellow uh, dithered together. Uh, the half pipe itself is black and red dithered. Uh, the line at the bottom of the screen is yellow and green dithered. And there's not very much animation either, so let's move on to the next event where things get quite a bit different. So this is the footbag event, and probably the poster child for the CJ More color effect. You can see at the top of the screen you've got uh, blue, white and red, and at the bottom of the screen you've got green, yellow and red. And so these two CJ palettes are on the screen at the same time. And the way this is done is to rapidly switch palettes basically at the middle of the screen and again back to the original palette at the bottom of the screen. And it has to be done with pixel perfect timing just like the gameplay itself. Uh, so basically uh, this could be done using raster interrupts if only the CGA card had them. So that would be interrupts that would fire when the raster reaches a certain point on the screen. Uh, but instead it has to be done using the programmable interval timer. Uh, fortunately, on original hardware, uh, the CPU, the timer, and the CGA card are all on the same clock, which makes close synchronization possible. Uh, but it still means that the gameplay itself, the animation, the clock at the bottom, and uh, all of the keyboard input have to be handled within very tight timing tolerances. Uh, in fact, uh, there are 60 refreshes a second with the CGA and uh, two palette switches per refresh, which means that 120 times a second uh, they're having to change palette. So it's a miracle that this was done in a game at all, and it's a real credit to the programmers that they were able to pull this off and make uh, not only just a playable game, but a very popular one at that. So this is the surfing game, and uh, it looks like there's only four colors here, and that's because this is a standard CGA color palette uh, with uh, light blue, white, and red. Uh, but instead of using black for the background color, uh, they've gone with dark blue. And of course, this is possible on the CGA card. Uh, what makes this game so impressive is the amount of animation going on. Now the CGA card is not capable of doing full screen animation uh, because it's just not fast enough. 
uh, but they've given the impression of full screen animation here by being very selective in which pixels they're updating. And so it's once again a credit to the programmers of this that they've managed to make a very, very playable game, at least once you figure out what the controls are and what you're actually supposed to do. Uh, despite the fact that they've got a very low number of colours uh, and uh, you know a lot of technical trickery uh, involved in order to make uh, the graphics appear realistic. So this is the skating game which I find a little bit more difficult to control than some of the other games uh, but it's still a very technically impressive demonstration of the CJ Moore colour effect. Uh, you've got blue, white and red at the top of the screen and down where the score is at the bottom you've got uh, green and yellow and occasionally red and the impressive thing is that they managed to combine this technical effect with a CPU intensive effect namely the uh, horizontal scrolling and of course the CGA card itself is not fast enough to do uh, full screen horizontal scrolling uh, so they're just being very very selective about which pixels they're updating uh, between each frame here uh, the other really impressive thing about this particular game is the quality of the graphics themselves. Uh, you can see that the, uh, you know, combining the colours at the top of the screen, which is after all just an ordinary CJ palette, uh, with dithering and just very carefully hand-drawn graphics, uh, in a way that's uh, just incredibly impressive. So this is the uh, flying disc event and you can see that instead of doing the updates at the middle of the screen and the bottom of the screen, they do the palette changes around a very narrow band around where the blue, white and red is uh, in the sky and the mountains. And so this means that both updates are being done in the active portion of the screen instead of one of them being done at the bottom where the vertical retrace happens, which is a very long period of time. Uh, and if I press keys, you can see that the green bleeds through into the blue region in the sky. And that's because the key interrupts are interfering with the timing interrupts. So this is the BMX game, and uh, you can see that they're using blue, white, and in this case magenta at the top of the screen, and green, yellow, and red uh, everywhere else. Uh, now, the only thing is, in the mountain region itself, you'll notice that there's a few lines where they're using blue, red, and black. And this means that uh, they're actually using three palettes at once on this screen, I believe. And of course, there's seven colors in total, including black. Now, this is particularly impressive given that the scrolled region is really detailed. And uh, the only problem, of course, is occasionally you get full screen flickering uh, because a palette skip is uh, missed entirely and uh, so especially when I press uh, multiple keys and mash the keys you can see that uh, you get a full screen flicker. Uh, the other problem of course is that it can be at times quite slow and it will go quite quickly if you build up some momentum say from down a hill uh, but a lot of this is just uh, an illusion uh, due to the fact uh, that it's just moving everything further each frame. It's still only going about three or four frames a second, uh, but still incredibly impressive. And uh, basically that brings us to the end of California games. Uh, but I want to show you what this game looks like on a machine that isn't original hardware. I want to show you running uh, the CGA more color mode, but on a different machine. Uh, so this is uh, not an original IBM PC, uh, but it is an 8088 running at 4.77 megahertz. The difference here is that it's not genuine CGA hardware and you can see that uh, the title screen for a start comes up in just four colors and uh, this is because the timings are different uh, on this machine to the original uh, IBM PC and so the uh, CGA more color mode is simply not available. Uh, so let's also see one of the uh, actual games themselves running uh, on this machine. So this is the BMX game and you can see that it's really just ugly four color CJ. Uh, it even looks dim and uh, very unentertaining. Uh, so that really shows you just how much of a difference uh, those extra little bits uh, of color make 
um, it really does improve the appearance. It's really a shame that other game manufacturers didn't catch on to this and produce games in this way, but of course uh, this must have been one really extended effort on the part of the programmers to put this together. Uh, California Games was very popular and uh, it enjoyed a lot of success, but uh, it's not clear whether that was actually due to the CJ more color mode, uh, given how few people would have actually seen it. Uh, you know, due to not having original hardware, it's hard to gauge uh, whether the success of the game had anything at all to do with the extra effort that was put in. Uh, so it remains a bit of a singularity in the history of gaming, and I hope you, you found it quite interesting. Uh, that's all I wanted to show for this week, and uh, thanks very much for watching, and we hope to see you in a later video. Bye!